describe to us what we're seeing in these numbers and, yeah. and what Adam has gone through. Let's, let's kind of put the numbers to it. So when you're thinking about if a cash out refinance is right for you, and again, my team will help you if you're a current client here, or if you're not a current client, we're going to help you either way. You got to start with what is the market value of the home today? So in that far right column to the right, I know Adam's properties there are largely on the west side and the north side of Jacksonville. And so roughly each one of those homes is worth about $160,000 today. Bought it for roughly between 80 to you know, $100,000, you know, seven to 10 years ago. And those homes have appreciated quite nicely over those years. So for you, we'll take the first one. And I ran the numbers here so we can all kind of follow along at home. When you go to refinance, the bank is going to lend you 75% of the value of the home today, right? So that $160,000 is the, let's call it the new appraised value. To Darcy's question earlier, we're going to help you get really close to what that number is to make sure it makes sense for you to do a cash out refinance. You take that number, once you know it, multiply it times 75%, because the bank is going to be comfortable lending up to 75% for you for this refinance to go through. So now the new loan is going to be for 120,000. And out of that new loan, there's gonna be some costs to do this, right? The lender is going to earn origination fees and there's other fees that come along with it. Call it somewhere around maybe three to $5,000 is, is five would be on the high side, usually about three, but we'll just say five just to keep it, keep it easy here. So now you've gone from 120,000 down to 115,000. You take the 115,000 and you subtract what the loan amount is currently, right? So if you're looking at the screen right now, you can see on the first property, his original loan amount was about $65,000 when Adam purchased it. But again, Pablo, going through the profit centers here, what is the profit center not named tax savings, home price appreciation, cash flow, and inflation hedging that I love? Principal pay down. Principal pay down, right? It's like, you know, your rich uncle coming in and just paying down a loan for you. That's what we think about when we, when we think about your resident paying your loan off for you over time. Well, that loan amount, I actually ran the amortization schedule before jumping on the call here. Adam's loan is his current loan right now. It's not 64,480. It's about $50,000 or so, right? So He's got about another, call it $15,000 of equity that's been paid down by his resident over those 10 years, which is incredible. And so again, working the numbers, 160 is the market value, 75% gets you to 120. So to keep it simple, the costs that go along with getting the refinance, we're going to say $5,000. That brings you down to 115,000. Subtract out the $50,000 that he owes on the first loan. And Adam would be able to pull out about $65,000 from doing this cash out refinance. And oh, by the way, his original loan interest rate was 5%. His new loan will be somewhere in the neighborhood of 4%. Does that seem like a good deal to you, Pablo? That seems like a phenomenal deal. I mean, you're, you're talking about getting basically the same amount of money that you got your original loan for and at a lower rate for free, right? Like just for having, for having had this thing for, for 10 years and having had a, a, a tenant in place that's been paying it down. And then the rest of the stuff that we described, appreciation and low, and low, and low interest rate. That sounds incredible. Absolutely. You're being rewarded for making a great decision and buying and holding an asset that benefits from all five profit centers. So then, so then you take out 65,000, that's the cash that you can pull out and that cash can, you can, put it in your bank account and, or you can go buy a big screen TV or whatever, right? Like you can, you can do whatever you want with that money. But, but for our, for our sake, we are saying that you're going to take that and put, use that as down payment for more homes, right? Yeah. Let's say that's what your goals dictate, okay. right? If you're, if your goals are that you want to, you want to replace your income. And let's just say that in order to replace your income, each year, let's say that you earn $72,000 a year, that comes down to a $6,000 monthly income that you want to replace through rental properties here in Jacksonville. Well, you know, and again, my team builds this plan out with you. So we, I'm simplifying here, but if anybody wants to go through this exact same experience, 
you can, you can chat with my team about it. But I know that roughly each one of those assets, when they're fully paid off, is going to net about $800 a month of net cash flow for a property. So to me, when I hear your goal is $6,000 a month, to me that in my head, I'm like, okay, well, this individual needs eight properties in their portfolio at an absolute minimum, right? They need eight properties. So if you're a client and you have four properties and you're, and you're like Adam here, right? And your goals dictate that you want to get to six grand a month of passive income. You only have four properties right now. You're not going to get to six grand with only four assets, you need to get at least eight in there. And so this is a strategy. You can then take that $65,000 that we just walked through, through the cash out refinance. Again, lower interest rate, you're still preserving your cash flow on the first property. And now go and buy an additional property with JWB. And on that new property, you're getting, again, a 4% interest rate on the new debt. You're getting a positive cash flow asset for your fifth asset. And of course, you're going to be handsomely rewarded for buying and holding over the next market cycle, just like you were here uh, on the first one. Got it. So Paul McNally has a question and he says, how much would the 65K increase that property's monthly payment? Curious how the property's cash flow would be impacted. Well, think about it this way. When you go and you buy a new property for, for JWB, right? You're borrowing 25 you're putting down 25%, you're borrowing 75%. And so the new assets that we put in front of you are going to, and they, they do positively cash flow. So it's the same sort of kind of spread we're talking about here. In our neighborhoods, if you borrow 75% at a 4% interest rate, the rents have risen so much that they produce positive cash flow for you. So with this property on Peter Rabbit, you know, originally when he bought it for a purchase price of 80,600, the rents might have been, I don't know, $900, right? Now, when that home goes to rent out and what it's currently rented for, it's probably rented for somewhere around 1,200. So it would be very likely with your property, even if you do a cash out refinance, the combination of how rents have risen over the years as well as dropping your interest rate, probably is going to equate to a place where you're still positively cash flowing, even on the previous asset, which is another reason why I'm so excited about this opportunity right now. Typically, if you're a financial engineer, right, you're figuring out how to use the, the, the equity in your home to be able to advance your financial goals, you typically get to a place where you're like, well, I can pull this money out, but I'm going to be dropping our cash flow. Right now, because rents have gone up so much and because the interest rate is lower today, there's a really good chance you're going to be able to preserve your original cash flow and not have to make that decision. Wow. Wow. So that is, that is the, the perfect storm that we were talking about. I, I, hadn't really, I hadn't really conceptualized the impact on the cash flow on the first property. So really, really good question by Paul that, you know, obviously more experienced than I am, but to think that you can take out more money, you know, like you have, you have two buckets, you have the original property that's cash flowing that has its own ROI. And then you have the new money pool that you just created that can create additional ROI. So as long as you can keep that original ROI intact, then with the new money, it's, it, it it's a multiplier, right? Like it's like it, I guess the easiest thing to say is it's free money, right? Like it's, well, yeah. I mean, you, the other thing to consider is with the new asset, right? You're, you're using funds that you're, you borrowed on the first asset, right? The yeah. $65,000, right? Your, your new loan is going to be $115,000 on the new asset, right? Uh, excuse me, on the previous asset, $115,000 borrowed on the previous asset. Let me start over. $120,000 is going to be borrowed on the previous asset. So, you're probably going to be somewhere around, you know, preserving the cash flow there. But on the new asset, you're also going to wind up with 100, maybe 200 bucks of cash flow as well. Right. So, you know, even if, even if your cash flow went down $100 on the, in, on the first property, you're getting positive cash flow on the new purchase because you're buying at a special time right now where interest rates are this low. So, yeah, this is an opportunity. You know, I'm not going to use the word free money because 
I think it'll probably turn a lot of people off. I think it's just, you're getting, you're getting rewarded for making a really great decision many years ago and buying and holding an asset that is a great hedge against inflation and also has significant upside with home price appreciation. Yeah. And I guess, and we, we've just been, that was really hammering on cash flow, right? Like that's not talking about the idea. So even if you, if you break even and or increase cash flow a little bit based on the whole picture of like one property to, the, to what you do with the money, the, the debt pay down, the tax benefits and the appreciation, as long as you're holding on to a, to a long-term site, right. To a full, full market cycle, that stuff then is, you know, the, the, what you're really getting that, that is just part of the deal of taking it out and putting it back in. Right. Yeah, absolutely. You're leveraging the equity from a previous asset and you're now acquiring a new asset that we show every week when we do the property of the week, every Thursday, we talk about how that new asset over a full market cycle, counting all five profit centers, produces many times over a 20% return on investment, right? So, I mean, you could, and you're, you're largely going to be able to preserve your initial cash flow on your first property. But even if you had to dip into that and maybe give up 50 bucks a month or hundred bucks a month, be able to get a new asset that is going to produce 10%, 15%, maybe even a 20% return on investment. That's a pretty good trade in my book, even if you had to give up some cash flow. Many times you don't. 